Hello, hello. Welcome in. Welcome into me cleaning my glasses. I know, very, very exciting. My glasses are filthy. Filth, filth, I say. I just cleaned them, they're still filthy. Good enough, I guess. Good enough. <clears throat> yep, still dirty. It's not, it's not good. Not good at all. I want to remind everybody to subscribe or resubscribe, as the case may dictate. Oh, I need to cut my nails, and um, and also follow me on YouTube, where these videos will drop uh, later in the afternoon. But also, I have a lot of other stuff on there, and I will probably be adding a lot more stuff in the coming days, weeks, months, minutes, seconds, nanoseconds. There's Amanda Ward. What's up? Looking forward to hanging out with you tomorrow. Getting some writing in. Let me write that down so I don't forget and sleep in. stomach had work networking go yes i miss running your house already. <laughs> well i'll get into the whole voucher con thing once we have a bunch of people in and uh, i will i will answer questions we'll do a little q a <clears throat> did you get a lot of writing were you here um last week and did you stay and and get some writing in Get more words in, went over there. We're good. You know what? The house is open. You have the key. Just, you know, make some noise when you come in any day. You just work. I'm going to go over to his house and write. So I know. I don't, I'm not just walking around and all of a sudden I just see you sitting in, sitting in the dining room writing. It scared the heck out of me. I stayed most of the day, Wednesday and Thursday. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, <laughs> I will need you again. In two weeks, Thursday and Friday, the 19th and the 20th. Can you can you work those? The 19th and the 20th. Because I will be going to Nink on those days. We're not leaving until uh, Wednesday later in the day. That might be kind of creepy. Maybe I'll stay in the corner of my back turned. That's, that's not creepy at all. 
just standing in the corner holding your laptop typing. That wouldn't be weird at all. Although when you get here, I might uh, I might hear the cat. Maisie will probably be, be uh, whining and following you around. Man, we got home last night at uh, 9 o'clock, and she has not left <laughs> Jelly's side. She's slept in, in, in the bed next to her all night or at her feet and just will not leave her alone today. No matter where Shelly is in the house moving around, the cat is following. There's Mr. Frank. Both cats came out to hang a bit. I felt very special when Mary came out. Yeah, you should, because she does not like people. So it's cool that uh, she actually likes you. I am laboring on Labor Day. Laboring mostly my breathing. Mostly when I walk. M Maisie crawled into my arms while I was typing, demanding attention. Yep. She's very big on... Shelly is uh, sitting on the couch watching videos or something on her phone, and then Maisie has to get between her and the phone. That crazy cat. I'm not expecting to uh, type, uh, to uh, to write too much today. I want to write something. Because I'm still ahead for my year. And now I have uh, less than a month to finish my year of writing. So my goal is to um, get some writing in today at some point. Maybe not on this, depending on once enough people jump in, I can start uh, asking questions, talking about things. I just want to thank folks for raising awareness on Patrick Tomlinson. En enough, enough with this. Why, why are we, why are we giving him an entire newsletter worth of, um, of, um, what do you call it? Yeah, why? Hey, there's another, here's another bad actor in, in the horror community. Let me write an entire newsletter about him and all the things about him so that everybody can check him out. I, I don't get it. Always the drama. Newsletters to be oh, I, I saw some other stuff. Luckily, I was away all weekend, so I just saw the typical people who love to comment. I love I love all that. Since I haven't written in like I don't know since last Tuesday, punching down is cool. I guess it for some people I guess it is. I just cleaned my glasses. I think I got some in my in my eyeballs. Some of that solution. Have you talked to Sean since you were for return from Bouchercon? No, I have not. I have not. Um, 
I kept calling him Sean, and my wife, uh, my wife said, um, I told him S Dog. <laughs> she thought that was funny, but no, not since I I, I talked to him uh, at BoucherCon, and we're we're probably best friends at this point, which is good. Yeah, S Dog. For those who don't know, S A Cosby, Sean Cosby. If you're friendly with him, or S Dog, if you're best friends with him, like I am. I've not talked to I've not talked to him though. S A ton. I get it. C. Forget it. How can they just immediately get so filthy? Oh, Amanda, if you're still there, we might have to. Uh, I might have to take a trip. And I could do it after. At some point, if we decide we're going to go for lunch, I got to run by the library. I got a bunch of books I got to drop off that are overdue, and I got to pick up a book by tomorrow, and I don't want to forget it. Great cold play shirt. No, no, no. It says, it says cold brew. Cold brew. But I'm still wearing my uh, my thing. Can you see it? This is see Sisters in Crime sponsored BoucherCon, and then that's my name, and they spelt my name right. And it has a very convenient pouch in the back where I kept putting business cards as I was meeting people, and also I got a I got a free pen from somebody. All good, all good, but no, no, not not Coldplay, and I don't think you can really put great and Coldplay in the same sentence. I think legally you're not allowed to do that, Frank. So please. Please stop doing that. That looks pretty. It is. Oh, very, very fancy. Very, very fancy. And my my name is in yellow. Uh, my name's not in yellow. The, the card is on a yellow card. Because I'm a published author. So you could find all the other published authors based on that. Or Anthony Nominee or... Edgar nominee any of the awards if they were nominees they also had it on their card not sisters of slaughter no are they back now I thought I saw one of them is writing again or something I thought only one of them really did write they were just like hey let's use the gimmick of two two hot horror chicks together you know but I had a uh, Phenomenal, phenomenal, life-changing weekend. Writing career-wise, at least. It was definitely life-changing. It was, um... This was the convention I've always wanted to go to and didn't know existed. And I'm used to going to... Uh, again, I'm going to disparage the horror community. I'm used to going to ones where there's always drama was it better than ncis uh the tv show anything is better than that show i don't watch that show uh better than nink how about that better than nink and that before this was my favorite one because of all the professional people professional professional but for me um it was a great mix it was so it was huge 
Yeah, better than Nink. And I'm going to tell you why. Because it's like the good parts of Nink, okay, but for thrillers. So Nink is a lot of stuff for, you know, there's three panels at a time at Nink. And one of them is always something about um, romance. You know, romance, selling, whatever. Which is great. Like, for you, Amanda, that would be a, a great one to go to. Ah, uh, genre specific, not everyone is talking romance. Right. So, literally, we're all talking thrillers. Mysteries and thrillers. And there's six panels going on at a time. And I wanted to go with at least two of them every time. And and it's all very... Uh, so, I went, I, I went to, like, a great Southern Gothic... Uh, one with S.A. Cosby, my boy S-Dog, and uh, four other authors, four other authors, and a moderator. I didn't know any of the other, I had never read any of the, the authors. But after meeting them, after hearing about their books and everything, I was like, you know what? This idea that I have now that I'm kind of playing with was, um, it, I could I could write this as Southern, uh, Southern Gothic, a Southern Gothic noir or Southern Gothic thriller. And uh, it really was like, you know what? It's like the epiphany of this is what this is what the idea is that I've been playing with, uh, which was which is great. Was there any caper discussion? There was a a one about uh, heists. So uh, yes, and they uh, had some good info information there. They asked anybody anybody write have ever written a heist. Um, story and i raised my hand i did a trilogy and they were a couple people were interested in i think we're i think got some sales out of this a lot of people asked about um my audiobooks uh because that's a big thing with thrillers is people listen to a bunch of different books so that was good and um but overall i just had a phenomenal time i um i met a ton of huge authors a, a ton of authors that are at my level or below or above, whatever. It was uh, 1,800 people in this thing. I love Epiphany. I think we're alone. Yeah, that you you know who I'm talking about. So the place it is is the Gaylord Convention Center. No comment from that, Frank. And it is huge. It is like a city. It is literally like I, I was hitting like 10,000 steps a day. Um, it's just gigantic. There's like level of level of level. You're We're on the ground level and then you got to go up two levels to the convention center level and then two levels above that is the mezzanine section where all the panels are and restaurants are spread out all over the place it took us like i don't know half an hour 45 minutes just to walk to the other side to the jack daniels restaurant the only jack daniels restaurant in the world by the way is it is there it was all right and so it was a lot of um it was a lot of um, uh, uh, people. It was a lot of there was a lot of publishers there. There was a lot of uh, PR people there. There was a lot of agents there, and a lot of big authors. So you're just like you're walking around. You sit down at a table, and people just come up and they just start talking to you, introducing themselves. What do you What do you write? What do you write? Kind of thing. I've never seen you spend so much time in Tennessee without bitching about Tennessee. I knew it had to be something except Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. For the first time, I did not bitch about being in Tennessee. I was I was happy being in Tennessee. And, um, you know, you're just sitting, you get up in the morning. It's like 7 o'clock in the morning, and I'm wide awake because I can't sleep in, in a hotel room. And I go up to the convention center, and they give you, they have, there's coffee, and here's some bagels and cream cheese and apples i'm not gonna eat an apple and uh i get my stuff and i go out into the main area where there's like a hundred tables and people are just randomly sitting so i just sit by myself at a table because that's what i do and here comes like harlan colbin just comes and sits down and and just you're just talking like it like it's nothing you know sean cosby's walking around I'm like hey sean can i get a picture with you yeah sure no problem you know when we're just we're just chit-chatting i um I get to hang out with Jess Lowry, who wrote a ton of great books, uh, has won a crap load of awards. I got to talk to her and uh, for a little bit. Dennis Lehane, who, who wrote uh, Mystic River and uh, Shutter Island and a bunch of other stuff, is just cool. We're just talking about the Red Sox and just talking about, 
you know, hanging out. Just Larry. No. Jess, J-E-S-S, Lowry, L-O-U-R-E-Y. Sorry, I have a New Jersey accent, so it sounds like just Larry. So it's it was cool. You just got to just see, you know, these guys these, and women are just normal, and they're just hanging out, and everybody knows everybody. And the Michael Wiley, yes, the Michael Wiley was there. So I got to see him, me and Shelly uh, Crest, Pat, Crossed paths, I don't know why I couldn't say that, crossed paths with him in a hallway, and then we stood there for like an hour and got in everybody's way just talking about stuff, which is cool. Um, I got a lot of, uh, I got uh, one of the big authors introduced me to their uh, their literary agent, and the literary agent was like, what do, you, what do you write? And I said, well, I'm, you know, I said what I'm doing now, and uh, I said, but I have an idea for a southern gothic noir that I've been kind of toying with, and I think I got a lot of insight, and I got a lot of um, ideas from here. And so they were like, you know what, give me your card, and um, and we'll keep in touch. You know, find me on social media and stuff. So that was uh, that was promising. Um, I don't know. I mean, I could go on and on. It was just it was just a great experience. Again, no drama, no complaining. Everybody there, a lot of people was their first time there. And again, you had like 2,000, you had like 2,000 people there. They also had the, at the same time in the hotel, because it's so big, and there are like, we're in the main convention center, but then there's other, like two other convention centers. And one of them, I don't know what the one group was that was there all weekend when we were there, but they were a bunch of dudes in business suits, and some guy was talking about when he worked for Nike. And those guys were wandering around, but then all of a sudden you hear the, the you hear all this clicking noise. It's all tap shoes. There was the clogging championships. So all these little girls who look like John Benet Ramsey walking around five years old with way too much makeup, more makeup than I've ever worn in my life, and their little tap shoes wandering around all over the all over the friggin' place. No matter where you went, you heard them them tapping along. So that was. Um, that was interesting. And then one of the, as I'm, I'm sitting there on Sunday morning, uh, having my coffee, trying to wake up, this family comes by and the, and I was wearing, I was wearing my Jacksonville jumbo, jumbo shrimp, uh, hat. And they, he's like, go shrimp. And I said, you from Jacksonville? He's like, orange park. I said, cool. I said, I live in ocean way. He's like, all right. And we fist bumped. He had his little, his two little, his little clogging daughter there. <laughs> Nightmare fuel. Yeah. Yeah, it was weird. Like you, were, I'm like we're walking, we're trying to find a restaurant, and I'm like, we need to walk faster. Like my knee is killing me, but I need to walk faster because I hear the click, 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 click behind me. Like there's like four or five of them, like they're just chasing us. But other than that, it was great. There was, uh, I think there's like a dozen restaurants within that place. Shelly left. Shelly went out and got her, um, uh, got a massage. Uh, inside the, if, if she had done a massage and facial and whatever, it would have been like $500 inside the, uh, the convention center or hotel. So she spent like, I don't know, less than a third of that because she just went into, uh, Tennessee, into Nashville. But, uh, I met a ton of people. There was great panels. I, I was on, I was on, I wasn't on any, so I didn't, cause this was my first one. So I didn't sign up for anything. And I realized that was a mistake because like on the first day, Wednesday, like the five o'clock panel, five thirty panel, whatever it was, the guy, I heard them or they're, they're up there and you know, they got hot mics and one guy's like, so after you do a panel, you're like four to six people per panel. And there's again, six panels going on at the same time for 50 minutes. And then there's like a 40 minute break to the next set of panels. So in that break, you go down to one of the uh, the ballrooms, Delta Ballroom B, and they have all your placards set out, and you sit down at a table and you can sign books. And they have um, uh, a book local bookstore which bought a shitload of books of all of the authors that are you know signed hundreds and hundreds of authors, and so. You go and you buy a book from them, and then you get it signed, or you bring books from home, whatever. And one guy said, I brought with me 
200 copies of my book. Or they, they ordered 200 copies of my book. And I sold it the first signing this morning, and I have four more panels to go, and my book is already sold out. I thought, holy crap, because if you're on a panel, people want to know more about you, and they're going to either come and chat with you, take a picture with you. And I saw that. I saw those lines, no matter who the author was. Yeah. No matter who the author was, there was a line for them. Like, people I've never heard of. People like, well, this is my first book. People who were like, I don't even have a book out yet. It's coming out from Flatiron Press or this Down and Out Books or whatever. But there was still a line of people just wanting to, t to talk to them and take pictures with them and stuff. And I'm thinking, man, I should have been on some panels. So I uh, definitely, next year I'm signing up for panels. I've already signed up to go. Uh, it is in New Orleans next year. And uh, as soon as I got home, I, uh, I immediately signed up to go. And uh, Jonathan Mayberry will be there, one of the special guests, which I've known Jonathan for a dozen years. And Craig Johnson, who wrote the Longmire series, will be there. And um, uh, Michael Conley will be there, who, uh, who came to uh, uh, MondoCon. Oh, no, that's Michael O'Connell. That's a different guy. Michael Conley, who wrote Bosch. And uh, Lincoln Lawyer and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, those are some of the special guests. There's like a, I don't know, seven or eight special guests. But uh, it was great. It was great. It was, it was, um, the interviews were great. Like Dennis Lehane just basically just sat on a stage in front of like 1,200 people and just talked and just told about his growing up in Boston and his writing career and and all the other things and telling funny stories and everything else. And it was just, it was, uh, it was just great because these are big authors. There was a panel, um, where, uh, Harlan Coben, you know, who did all of the, uh, all those Netflix, Harlan Coben's shelter, Harlan Coben's whatever, um, ones. I think he's done eight or nine of them. He's done. And he's doing like three more. Yeah, the Harlan Coben. And so he's up there and they're talking. And um, uh, David Morell is up there. And he's the one who, who wrote Rambo, created Rambo. And uh, Mick Heron, who has a couple of Apple TV Plus series uh, out now. And a couple other people who have movies out. And so it was cool. It was like, for me, these are big names. These are the people that are... are are doing it that are that are making a, a, a real living doing this and it was neat to just be able to have to you know sit in the same room with them and talk it wasn't like a lot of conventions i go to like nick is nick is great for the um like i'm sure if amanda went why did i just whistle i'm sure if amanda went to nick she would she would know a bunch of the bigger romance authors but they're mostly indie romance authors. So a lot of them aren't going to have TV shows or movies or that kind of stuff. There's very few of those. Whereas Thriller, for something like Bouchercon, and this is the 55th year of it, um, they have a lot of those bigger authors that you can hobnob with, you can hang out with, you can talk to. I didn't get in tour head rent-free not being in the celebrity room. No, nobody, no. The, the, thankfully, there was no celebrity room or somebody would have said, why aren't you in the celebrity room? And that would have ruined my whole weekend. But so, uh, for me, it is, um, it was definitely like within, I don't know, like within like a few hours of being there on Wednesday and meeting so many people that I, I knew online and so many really cool people and they're, and they're generally asking, what do you write? Uh, do you have a card? I mean, I gave away, I had, I gave away every bookmark I had and, uh, probably like 50 business cards. So even when we did the discovery zone Friday night, 630 to eight, it was the first time they've ever done where if you're an indie author, you, you can basically, here's a free table and here's some, here's some hors d'oeuvres and some drink and, um, hang out and sell some books. So I didn't sell a ton of books, but I gave away a ton of bookmarks and a ton of business cards because a lot of people are is this does this available in audiobook yes okay give me your card and so i think that was pretty cool so hopefully that will actually lead to some sales as well and again 
me being a nobody, just getting in there, knowing a lot more people than I thought I would know. Uh, Douglas Pratt was there, Nicholas Harvey was there, and I, I had talked Doug into going, and then Nick went, and Michael Wiley had talked me into going. So, um, so I knew a few people, and I knew a lot more than I thought I would um, that were there. And uh, Laurel Hightower was there, who's a basically a horror author. She wasn't actually, she didn't actually pay to go. She just kind of wandered around outside and she snuck into a couple things. And I'm like, yeah, I paid money to, to do this and you're doing this. You're just wandering in for free. But anyway, she was there. got to chat with her for a few minutes. And uh, I guess she lives in the area or something. But it was cool. It was a lot of people that I know from online now that I've met. And I had a ton of people adding me on Blue Sky and Threads and Facebook and um, Twitter. So I had a great time. It was a, a, it was all in all, it was a very, very positive weekend for me. I'm looking forward to uh, next year. So now in two weeks, I go to Nick and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to go, but I'm not nearly as excited to be honest with you. Because a lot of this three panels at a time instead of six. There's 250 people instead of 2,000 people. And um, and there's not a ton of, there's nothing, I looked at all the schedule this morning, there's nothing specifically for me to go to. It's a lot of um, romance, which is fine because 75% of the people going are romance authors. Romanticy authors, that was, that was that's the big word. Um... So there's a lot of just general writing ones. And uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obviously hit those. There's also an Amazon marketing, uh, an ad guru who's going to be their company. And I have a uh, meeting, private meeting with them to see if, because um, I don't know what I'm doing with Amazon ads. I mean, they might, might, they might not know either, but I'm going to sit down and just have a one-on-one uh, -on -one with them, which would be cool. So other than, other than that, I'm looking forward to going to, to Tampa. My wife is definitely looking forward to it, laying on the beach and uh, getting a suntan and just not worrying about work and relaxing. And I'm, I'm interested in seeing some people that I haven't, uh, that I've seen before or haven't, haven't met, whatever. But there's Nick Zinn. At this point, without go, with, before going to Nick again, because I've gone three years now and I enjoyed it. But I think the problem is they're so close. And I think it's next year, BoucherCon is like September 3rd to 7th instead of, you know, end of August into September. Sto uh, lots of stories of me and the S-Dog. Uh, he only prefers, he prefers D-A-W-G, by the way, S-Dog. And so I'm... Um, I think like uh, Nink is the year is the week after, so I'm probably just gonna do BoucherCon. I've already signed up for it, and so I'm just gonna do BoucherCon in New Orleans. Now the next year, it's in Calgary, Canada. It's in Canada, in case you didn't you didn't know. Like I don't know, a couple miles from where Nick Zinn lives, and so I'm I'm more than I'm not going to that one. So then I might go to Nink instead. He Jello wrestled Sean Cosby S Dog at Bow Wow Woucher. <laughs> right. So I might uh so I'm gonna I I think and then the year after is in um Bouchercon is in Washington, DC, and then the year after that is in Indianapolis in Indiana. So I'm looking at I'm just gonna probably just be going to a bunch of voucher cons coming up because it's just was a, a great time. I loved when uh, I posted a Sean a picture of me and S Dog, and then Tommy Clark said, "Oh, I met him at Nikon, blah blah." I'm like, and I was just like so annoyed, and I just wrote, "This is not about you." And you know what? It's not about you. Just shut up. Oh, you did. Oh, you were the only one at Nikon because there was a couple hundred people there that also met him. So shut up. But Sean told some uh, some great stories, and uh, he won the Book of the Year, the Anthony Award. Named after Anthony Boucher. So he was the book of the year for uh, All the Sinners Bleed, which I had read. I had actually read a lot of the books that were up for awards, which ne is never never happens in horror for me. Because most of them are uh, crappy books for me. 
what flavor of Jello? So here's here's a here's a side note. When I was in high school, Jello wrestling was a big thing. Like they had a company that would go, you know, school to school, and they had Jello wrestling. When I was a senior, and I signed up. Um, me and and Russ Meyer, not the director, Madman. The two of us wrestled against Frank, not uh, Frank Edler, Frank Valenti and uh, Ricky Perez. And uh, we, we um... <laughs> this is a good story. And so we jello wrestled. And we were like, we want to go like match like three or four. There's like ten matches. Like, people are going to get bored with this. It was in the high school gym, the whole thing. And me and Russ came out in our uh, Wiedermacht, our, our German trench coats to um, the beginning, the opening part to uh, Fast as a Shark by Accept, the little German um, uh, little thing there in the beginning of that song. And then they were the uh, uh, Sons of Liberty or some crap like that. And anyway, so we went and we wrestled uh, in Jello. And I will tell you that the Jello that they used has absolutely no flavor to it. There's no sugar in it, obviously, and it was just utterly disgusting to get that up your nose and in your mouth when you got slammed. I don't think the idea behind Jello wrestling is two men facing off. Yeah, that was the, uh, so there was only like two matches I remember that it was girls wrestling. No, no, there's, there was two matches with girls. One was, was girl on girl Jello wrestling, and the other one was a guy and a girl and a guy and a girl. And I remember booing because the the guys were mostly wrestling around. And I'm like, no, we want the girls to do this. So yeah, that was the it was like a fundraiser thing. So that was um, that was my Jello wrestling experience. Now living in Florida during Bike Week and stuff, you, you get to go to um, the Cabbage Patch where they do the uh, the wrestling, and that's uh, that's always exciting because it's basically it's a bunch of strippers or former strippers trying to rip each other's tops off mud wrestling you know all good stuff so there's my uh, there's there's a free story for you so do i have any questions from the audience about about tracon or anything else while well, i take a sip Lesh. Bless you again. We're trying to we're trying to twitch here. did you invite to MondoCon for next year? <laughs> so far, none of those people. So far, MondoCon will be the same group as this year. Um, that is the goal. That is the hope. Frank wants to know, is that Shelly or your pet Yak? Do you hear that, Shelly? I didn't hear that. that, was, that it was Shelly. Shelly was sneezing. The pet yak is outside, uh, spitting at the the feral cats. Apparently, while we were gone, the uh, one of the smoker that she had used for MondoCon, the door was open, and a wild animal got into it, and it the shelf is pulled out, which means they were probably trying to climb in to lick grease off of it or something. Animals are so disgusting. Yes, I'm. I'm definitely 100% looking forward to uh, BoucherCon next year. So, I'm also. We've also come up with kind of the uh, with the good part is you're driving for nine or ten hours, and um, so we got a lot of talking in and a lot of uh, career talk for me, and and basically my wife tell me I was just an idiot on a lot of things. And then some things I need to focus on. And obviously I need to focus on 
the um, the thriller stuff. So my goal is to write a southern gothic noir and pitch it to an agent. Obviously, the agent that I met this weekend would be the best one. Um, but to any basically any agent who can handle that and move up to that level. And so I'm kind of cutting down on some of the stuff I had planned. And some of the stuff that is not thriller is basically coming off of my, my board very soon. So I will not be... I will be writing as much. I probably just won't be putting out as much because I'm, I'm not going to do everything self-published. I'm going to work with... Uh, I also found a bunch of really good short story markets uh, there and uh, award-winning ones. So I'm going to start really playing around with those and uh, writing more short stories as well and doing that. Really, really get my focus much better than, than where it's been. So... I'm excited about all that. I'm excited about the challenge. Frank says, will you open up this week's newsletter with a cute story about the trials of wrangling your pet yak and feral cats? No, that, I leave that for better, better, more, more famous authors than me to, to do all that. So, yeah. I did grab a couple of um, books. The, um, the new Gabino Iglesias book. Um couple other books i don't even remember what they are but uh that was the cool part too is they gave you as part of your they gave they gave me this cool name thing and then they give you a bag with the uh, mystery writers of america logo on it and uh, i got a water bottle i got a bunch of cool swag and then they give you uh tickets you go pick up three free books that all the big publishers basically have sent like boxes and boxes of books. So there was like 50 tables of books. So you got to go and grab uh, three books. So I got to wander and I could have, I could have picked up 50 of them. They were all really good. <laughs> Gabina was not, was not there, um, this year, but his book was, his new book was. So I grabbed it. Although then somebody on Instagram or something had mentioned the book. And I said, I just picked up a copy of it and started reading it. And then he said, uh, very cool, or whatever he said. He flexed his muscles. But I think Gambino was there last year or the year before. Did his new book threaten to kick your ass? Not yet. I think it's getting there. I think I think it keeps kind of eyeing me, cross-eyed. So I, I, I'm, I'm thinking at some point the book is going to threaten to kick my ass. So it will be uh, interesting. So I'm excited. So now hopefully that will propel me. So the other thing of this is we're doing St. Louis. We're doing AuthorCon in October. And um, then we're doing AuthorCon. We've already paid for the table for next year. Me and Tom Duffy are sharing a table in, uh, in Virginia. And I'm thinking that that might seriously be it for that those conventions. Because they're mostly horror, whether they want to admit it or not. It is, they're horror conventions. And I just, my, so my goal for those two conventions, the, you know, November or uh, October, and then March, April, whenever the other one is, is to sell as many of my horror print books as possible at those two events, get rid of them, and then not restock any of those. And then my closet will eventually just be all of my crime thriller stuff. So that's the goal. And so next year, it will be BoucherCon and MondoCon. Might be my only two events. Now, that being said, there might be some local stuff. I know um, Tim Gilmore, who is a local um, nonfiction author here in Jacksonville. He writes about the history of Jacksonville, especially the, the dark side, like the KKK and stuff like that. Um, there's a book signing coming up and in... October, I believe, and he asked me if I wanted to be part of that, like a Halloween thing. So uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, let me let me just check the dates on it. So that's kind of cool. So I'll do some small stuff like that. I'll do San Marco books. I'll do things like that. But otherwise, um, just really the and then at, at some point I might pick up more of thriller conventions because there are a lot of other uh, thriller centric conventions. 
that I think I would I would get a lot out of. So that's kind of the goal. Gilmore Con, no, it's not the, uh, not it's not Gilmore Con. The K K K three my favorite. Now I'm gonna have that. I'm gonna have that song in my head uh, all day. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate that. So yeah, so that is um, all very exciting. I'm again very very excited. I want to also remind everybody to subscribe or resubscribe, and also uh, to subscribe to my um, my YouTube channel as well. I appreciate it. appreciate all the support from everybody. Appreciate you uh, letting me write. Appreciate you letting me chat with you, and all of these uh, other things. I don't think I'm going to be on much longer, depending on if anybody has any legitimate actual questions about anything. But as you can tell, I'm I am way more focused than when I left last week. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. It's cool that it was like uh, tables set up in the mezzanine area where all the panels were. And everybody was putting their, like, at first there was like three or four bookmarks out. So I had uh, a whole stack of bookmarks, really, so I put a bunch of them out, and then they were gone. And uh, so that was cool. So a lot of people picked up uh, Dirty Deeds bookmarks, uh, First Coast Thriller bookmarks, and the uh, Johnny Bell Heist series that me and Tom co-wrote, those bookmarks, and my business card. So sounds like it was really great. It was. It was, it was phenomenal. Um because it was so focused like i was doing i was going to panels like i went to you know sa cosby you know did the panel on southern gothic thrillers and that was a great panel and um my, the michael wiley did a panel sunday morning on um uh thrillers um i forget what the exact theme of it was but it was, he was really good, and there was other thriller authors up there that I had never talked to. It's no Jekyll combo to have to do. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't no, what's going to be as good as sitting around and not selling any books and uh, and being manipulated. I have a question. Does S.A. replace J.C. as your first two initials friend? Whew. All right, so J.C. Walsh comes first, but then A.C. Ward was was second, and now S.A. Cosby is it, it takes over both of those. So yeah, I think that's the that's how that works. I mean, that's what that's 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 where that uh, where that goes. So I felt like uh, I felt like BK because uh, when I came home I had like seven hundred and something emails to go through. I mean, most of them are junk. Most of them are newsletters. Most of them are trying to sell me something. Most of them are garbage. But I'm sure his two thousand emails are all just he, he people need something from him. So I went through. I think I got it down to like four hundred something this morning. But you don't call him at AC, so don't count. Maybe in private. Maybe with just the two of us hanging out, I call her AC. Maybe I call her Atlantic City. I mean, I don't. And I don't think she writes under AC Ward anymore either. Amanda will be over here tomorrow, hanging out. We're both going to be writing. You don't know if I do or not, Frank. You don't. You, I don't. You, you're right, I don't. So we're going to hang out tomorrow and get some writing in. Like I said, I'm going to get a little bit of writing in today. Nothing nothing major, but probably be the first time I've ever come back from a convention or a book signing and I've actually had I've written something, which is good because I'm excited. <laughs> Just when the song was starting to fade. No one knows what we call each other. Exactly, Amanda. Exactly. When, when we're alone, uh, Amanda calls me Big Poppy Chulo. I don't even know what that means. I mean, you can literally write all the words to that song, Frank, because there's like 12 words in the whole song. Catchy as hell, though. Catchy as hell. Don't give it away. <laughs> 
so I'm pumped. I'm psyched. I am, uh, I am, uh, I got a lot of work to do though. Like I met, again, I met a, a lot of publisher, publishers I didn't even know existed. They had all the, they had the awards. So the Anthony award is the big one, but they also have the Seamus award. They have the something else. There was like five different awards they give out in a, during a couple of different things for, um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, they, they give out, and I was like, oh, a lot of short story uh, places that, um, not the, the Sheamus, the Sheamus. Sheamus, you're thinking of the wrestler. Did they have Thriller Oki? No. <laughs> no, they did not. I believe they had a dance one night. I believe they had a, a dance with a cash bar. I did not go to that. The food in the restaurant in the restaurants was very expensive, though. Um, we went for Italian food, me and my wife, and we, neither of us are drinking alcohol. And um, it's like a hundred dollars, and then a tip. We went to Anti. What is it? What's the pretzel place? Should I even out there? Auntie Anne's, that's what it is, Auntie Anne's pretzels. And for two little buckets of pretzel bites, or one pretzel bites and one of the doggies uh, in a blanket thing, and two drinks was $40. You just should have hit the Pola Dean restaurant over there. We did that the last time, and I was not impressed. We also went to the Pola Dean restaurant in uh, Savannah a few years ago, and I was also not impressed. Yeah, affordable Southern family style. Yeah, so like every restaurant is like, like we went and got, a, the pizza was $7 a slice, okay, or the whole pizza is $28 for six slices. So we ended up just buying the whole fucking, the whole pizza. You know, but it's $28 and then it's two drinks and it's all of a sudden it's like 40 something dollars for lunch. And then the Jack Daniels restaurant was over a hundred dollars as well. I did get a flight of um, Jack Daniels, so I got the um, uh, Jack Honey, Jack Fire, and Jack Apple. And I didn't realize they give you the flight, and they literally it's like a drop <laughs> of each in there. It wasn't a shot. It wasn't even half a shot. It was like an eighth of a shot in each for fifteen dollars. I was like, holy crap! So that was over $100 as well. And then there's like a half an hour to 45 minute wait uh, as well. So when we left, we were like, we're not eating at the, uh, uh, the, the Michael uh, Wiley panel ended at um, 1020, 930 to 1020. And then I was like, all right, we're going to go. And Shelly had already put half the luggage in the car. So we, you know, it takes you half an hour to get the hell out of the, the, um, the convention center. It's so big. We left and we're like, we're not eating here because we don't want to wait another hour. We want to get home, but let's hit, hit the road. So we just hit the road and then we're just driving and driving. And all of a sudden I'm like, White Castle. It's the only White Castle in the area. Let's go to White Castle. So we went, sat down in White Castle. Which I haven't had White Castle. And then her cousin, Robbie, was like, uh, you know, we have crystals here. And I'm like, dude, that ain't even close to the same thing. Calm that shit down. If you weren't bigger than me, I'd kick your ass right now. Which was good. And then we went to uh, Carol's, the, the meat market that we love to go to on the way home. And I got some meat sticks. We got a bunch of other random things. We only hit one Bucky's. We hit one Bucky's on the way up. Because we actually we didn't actually need gas. And I was like, you know what? Let's do Bucky's. And then I got a, uh, I got a sliced turkey sandwich. And she got the brisket sandwich. She also got a windshield wiper fluid. I'm like, dude, you can get anything in this place. But we saw a lot of Bucky's, which is weird because two years ago when we went that way, I think there was one Bucky's, and now there's like four. It doesn't hold the same charm anymore because we only we never had any around here, and the only time we would see, go to Bucky's is when we were going to Biloxi to gamble, and uh, there was one right when you get out of Florida. But now we have one in St. Augustine, we have one in Daytona, 
they're building there's one in Orlando they're building 57 more of them so it's not as exciting when you can easily go to them you know what I'm saying still good though I mean you know still still a clean bathroom all I have in New Jersey is ridiculous billboard <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, go 5,000 miles and you can go to the nearest Bucky's. But I would imagine they put that there. I would imagine there's got to be a Bucky's at some point in your future. You would hope. Good times. Uh, good times were had by all. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited. I'm pumped. I'm happy. I'm excited. I'm. I got, I got things to do. There's a bunch of podcasts, uh, people that I met that do uh, thriller uh, authors interviews. So I'm going to hook up with them. Like I said, I got tons of people on social media started following me. Yeah, stoked. Stoked Urkan. No, 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 no. So I'm very, very excited. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I guess Amanda's coming tomorrow, so I will not be on Twitch. Or if I am, it will be later in the day, but probably not. I definitely will be here Wednesday. My wife goes Thursday night to her uh, to her mom's for uh, through the weekend, through Sunday night. Uh, her sister's flying back to Dallas, so my goal is this weekend, without her here, um, to get more writing in and get more stuff in. I'm not even worried about the 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 word counts. I, I want to hit them, but I'm I'm more worried about getting all the other stuff in motion. I also realize that I don't have all of my books in uh, Ingram Sparks, and I need to do that. I need to 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 follow up on a bunch of stuff and get them in there so people can actually order them. Because if I was on panels, I only think I got like four or five books, uh, thrillers that you can order that would fit. You know, like, all the Severed Press books are in there. All of the, um, pretty much every, all of my horror stuff from publishers, you, you, the, the stores, that store could order. So, I gotta get some of this other stuff there. I also gotta do more audiobooks. For this new series, I gotta do audiobooks. And then hopefully me and Tom at some point will make enough money selling um, these trilogies. We can do that too. So, there you go. All right. Anybody got any last last question before we end the panel? It was also Starbucks coffee. That was my one my one bad for the for the entire thing. It was uh, all Starbucks coffee and all Pepsi products everywhere we went. So I just drank uh, I just drank a lot of root beer, and their sweet tea was instant. I'm like I could, I could get this shit in New Jersey. We're, we're still in the south. This is Nashville. What are you doing? But everyone, I had to have my had to have my coffee, and it was you know free coffee. I would have my coffee. I would have my bagel with cream cheese. A couple times they had some pastries. I would have some some pastries. They would have eight eight to ten, but really if you're if or seven to ten, but if you're not there by like seven thirty, everything is out, and then. Um, then they had, um, at 2 o'clock, they would have a snack break. So uh, I would get I would get something then. And then they fed fed you at several events, like the um, Anthony Awards. I had a picture of that. You saw a picture of that. There was um, apple, what the hell was it? Candy apple, candy apple pork belly skewers. Melt in your mouth. I had like a hundred of them. They were delicious. They had the those triangular Savlaki, whatever the hell things. And then they had shrimp with some dab of something. I don't know what it was. I've never had that before. It wasn't bad. And uh, what was the other thing on there? Oh, beef Wellington uh, little bite-sized things too. These two, these two young girls got in line before they were they were ready to open. I think and I just got behind them, so I started talking to them, and I was just like, you know what? 
when this starts, I'm like, you go this way, you go this way. And we ate, and the lady who was running the table there, she was like, there's plenty, take plenty. I'm like, you gave me a tiny little plate. But I did also sit right near it. <laughs> so then I got in line like four other times. So all good, all good. All right, I'm out of here. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. Again, make sure you subscribe or resubscribe. I will be back on Wednesday to chit-chat. And um, if you are a thriller author, cozy mystery, thriller supernatural, or whatever it is, check out BoucherCon. I will see you there in New Orleans next, next year. Amanda, I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>